Hi everybody, I'm Carl, and uh, I wasn't sure exactly what I was supposed to be talking about today, so <laughs> I kind of rehashed something I uh, did in November. So if you were at the Dev Day thing in, in Detroit in November, sorry, it's kind of a rerun, a little bit. Um, so, and, and I have way too much stuff here um, <laughs> for 15 minutes. That, that's what I get, right? 15 minutes? 15 minutes-ish. Yep. Yeah. Also, this is like off center somehow. So I'm, I'm worried that things are going to get cut off, but we'll, we'll see as we go along. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody breathe. Okay. Well, I'm just going to wing it. Here we go. Okay. So um, I think mine is pretty much the only one that's about jQuery. So maybe jQuery isn't really <laughs> winning that much. <laughs> In any case, um, I, I wanted to give you some, some advice, um, even though I'm probably not the best person to be giving advice. Uh, but this is it. Don't go crazy. Um, I, and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that in a bit. Or um, write your code as if you have to hand it off to your least capable current or future colleague. Or write your code as if tomorrow you could lose your short-term memory, right? I mean, this is, this is just basic programming kind of advice. Um, but um, I have found through my, my programming journey that, uh, uh, that uh, well, I've, I've been, uh, let me start over. Uh, that I, I don't know. Like I, I get really excited about stuff, and I think, oh, this is a really cool way to do this. Look, I can do this in like, like five bytes, and then I realize, yeah, but nobody else can read that, and nobody else is going to understand what I'm doing. And then I have to go, and then you know, I go back two weeks later, and I realize that even I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, I have to refactor it and make it legible. So uh, this kind of goes along with that. Um, uh, don't go crazy with terse code. Uh, you're not a minifier, right? Um, and there are ad advanced minifiers like uh, Clojure Compiler and Uglify.js, and they're much better at minifying than you are. Trust me, right? So, um, yeah, so like this first example here is an example of like what maybe you sh shouldn't do, even though like it's really cool. Like you could do something much uh, easier, more, uh, more simple and more legible, readable, and uh, somebody else will be able to understand it too. Um, now into some uh, jQuery stuff. Don't go crazy with complex selectors. Um, they start looking like regular expressions. Uh, people don't like regular expressions. Robots do. Uh, jQuery has a whole host of DOM traversal methods. Uh, you can use these instead of those crazy regular expression-y complex selectors. And they'll probably be better for performance anyway. So, so do that. So, for example, uh, these don't use them. Don't, you don't need to use those at all. These, the first two, don't bother. Second two, well, you might have to in some cases. These never use these. Never use these selectors. Okay. Um, and there are plenty of others. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking about custom selectors, and these are all. Uh, selectors that jQuery has added to its own API in addition to just the CSS selectors that you can use. Why am I suggesting that you don't use these? Because when possible, jQuery will use a native DOM method to do the selecting for you, like query selector all or query selector or get elements by tag name or something like that. And it cannot do that if uh, you're using one of these. Right, because it, it won't understand it. So it'll have to fall back to jQuery's slower uh, uh, selector engine. Okay. So here are some things you can do instead. You could use a dot .eq or dot .slice right, for um, equal or less than or greater than. Uh, you can use first and last. You can use any of these. Uh, these are CSS selectors, you can use these instead of the you know, colon checkbox, that sort of thing. Uh, notice that uh, I put input in front of all of those. That's generally a good thing to do because even though you could just put the brackets there and, and look for anything with type equals checkbox, there's only one kind of element that's going to have a type equals checkbox, right? And 
if your user is using uh, IE 6 through 8, it, that doesn't have query selector all, so it'll fall back to uh, just running through the DOM. And if you don't have input there, it'll treat it as if it's like a star, like a universal selector uh, with a type equals checkbox attribute. So it'll go through every single element in the DOM looking for uh, whether that uh, whether it has the uh, type equals checkbox on it, okay? So there's no equivalent CSS3 selector or jQuery method, method for odd and even, right? These are special cases. Nth child odd and nth child even are completely different. I don't have enough time to get into that, but so, you know, you might want to use those on occasion, but just uh, be aware of possible performance uh, problems. So don't go crazy with chaining. Um, it's great for short-term convenience, but too much chaining can be bad for debugging and eventual refactoring. So this is kind of crazy. You know, you might want to like think about how you can break that up a little bit. Um, you could do something like this, you know, where you set your variables and then you use those. Okay, so you have the elements in uh, as variables, and then you just use those and uh, traverse from there. Okay, so there's still some chaining going on, but uh, it's not not so crazy. Okay, <coughs> so you don't always have to convert a plain DOM element to a jQuery object, right? jQuery is just JavaScript, right? It, it is JavaScript. It's just a bunch of methods and properties and things like that that you can use to help you along, right? Uh, so um, sometimes it can really help to use uh, jQuery with stuff like this. So like this dot ID, that's all you really need if you're if you're trying to find out the ID of an element. You don't have to you don't have to do this, you know, this dot prop ID. It's, it's just not necessary at all. href, when you get into href and some some of these properties, it's a little it gets a little weird, right? Um, sometimes um, especially with the, the DOM property, it'll return the full uh, URL with the HTTP and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and even if you do it in with a get attribute, like you're trying to get the actual attribute value from in there, it'll still uh, do the HTTP, even if you didn't put it in the href, right? Um, unless you put a two as the second argument, you know? <laughs> Way to go, IE, right? Um, so, you know, jQuery normalizes things like this. It makes it uh, easier so you don't have to remember all this crap. All right, um, sometimes you could do both, right? See? Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so th there's gonna be another talk about uh, like plain JavaScript, going from jQuery to JavaScript. Of course you can do that. Uh, you don't need to use jQuery. Um, plain JavaScript's less forgiving. Just be aware of that um, and uh, there's Stuff about microlibraries here, but be <coughs> careful. And I have links to polyfills. This will all be online, so you can click on the links uh, if you want. So here are some examples. Just saying, like, look, you can use plain JavaScript and DOM methods and stuff like that. But um, if something goes wrong, it's not going to make it. It's not going to smooth it over for you. jQuery does a lot of the smoothing over. Like if uh, um, if you don't have an element with a, an ID of foo there, right, it's going to throw an error, okay, and it'll probably stop executing JavaScript uh, code after that. jQuery swallows a lot of these errors, so it's kind of nice, like you can just put this in your in your script and say, okay, well, if the, if the element's there, then it'll do this. If it's not, then it's not going to do anything, right? It'll just act on zero elements, uh, so it's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that, like, I saw on this uh, NetTuts article, like saying, hey, you can just do this with J J JavaScript now, it's so easy. And yeah, it is, except, you know, there are, except it's not. I mean, it's not that easy, right? I mean, if you, if you just do it in a very simplistic way, great. And if you really know what you're doing, then, um, yeah, you know, go for it. But if you only have a superficial understanding, it's going to come back and uh, bite you. Um, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so back to jQuery. Um, 
Uh, finding event handlers. Here's uh, some, more, some more advice. Um, use event delegation. You all know what this is? Um, event like if you have a whole bunch of like table cells, right? And you want to find some kind of click handler to all those, like you have like 10,000 of them or something like that, um, don't do it. It's going to it's gonna <laughs> go crazy. <laughs> right. um, unresponsive script error or whatever, um, right? And also try to avoid using live. Uh, if you can, just um, you, uh, it's it's deprecated now. So we're we're trying to move people away from live. Use delegate instead, or if you're running one seven uh, or later, uh, you can use uh, a different. Uh, you can use on, um, and that that <coughs> takes that, that can be used in, in place of bind or delegate or whatever. Okay. So <coughs> delegate is like a scalpel to live's sledgehammer. So you, you, you decide how far up the dump tree uh, you want the event to bubble. So what Live does is it attaches these events to the document. So, it, so every time there's a click, it'll have to bubble all the way up to the document before, um, you know, before it says, oh, I guess you didn't click on a table cell, right? Um, so, um, but with delegate, you can say, okay, no, I only want to, I'm gonna bind it to the table and then uh, any clicks uh, within the table will get registered and, and then it'll check to see, oh yeah, is this the table cell? Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> but it means that you need to be more careful about what and when you bind uh, with delegate. So for example, <coughs> so we have um, uh, this stuff here, right? I'm gonna click on the span here, right? And you're gonna see two things happen. We're, we're gonna see color me blue and my BG yellow. Right? And, uh, okay, and that's awesome. But now, I'm gonna inject, uh, I'm gonna inject this um, div id equals d div right, right in here, right? Um, this thing again, and we're gonna try it again. Look, with, um, with the color me blue, I'm delegating from the d wrapper right here. And uh, with the my bg yellow, I'm delegating from d div. So once I insert this stuff, now if I click on span, it turns blue, but the background doesn't turn yellow, right? Because I've replaced that D div, right? So because I replaced it and it was bound to the D div before I injected this in, it, it no longer works, right? So it has to be there when you bind it, right? Using delegate or whatever. So just be careful about how far up the DOM tree you want to delegate from. Okay. <coughs> so here's uh, on and off, right? So this is this is like taking the place of bind. This is taking the place of delegate. So it reads the same way. Um, dele you can still use delegate. I don't even think delegate's uh, deprecated. Um, <coughs> but it's just like de uh, delegate except for these two things are reversed. Right. Um, so. All right. Um, super long HTML strings, they can get messy and you can make a little mistake and everything can go bad. So um, there is a better way to inject uh, HTML. Um, <clears throat> you can create an object, right? And this way, if you have a reference to this object, then you can, you can change things on the fly. You can say, ah, oh, now I want dog.id to be foo-foo or whatever, right? And, uh, and then you can create another dog, right? So you can, you know, as you can see, you can do all that stuff. Let me see if I can give you an example of this to show you how this works. Yeah, see? Aww. Isn't that nice? That's, that's my uh, meager artistic ability with two divs. <laughs> and and uh, rounded corners and silly things like that. Okay. Um, now let's see. Oh, now I need to close this thing again, but I can't because I can't see that side. Okay, um, I'm gonna refresh that. Okay, okay. so uh, callbacks with animations, they fire when you might not expect them to, and they fire once per element, right? So be careful with this. For example, okay, so I'm gonna slide toggle, right? And since I have, and, and I, it's just one method, I'm just saying, you know, these uh, circles, slide toggle. And then in the callback, I say, you know, print this out, called after slide toggle. Well, 
there are two of these circles, so it's, it's printing out twice, right? You might only want one thing to happen, or you might want that thing to happen only once afterwards, right? Um, also, keep in mind that if I hit slide down now, they've already slid down. Uh, those callbacks are going to be executed immediately. Okay, they're still going to happen. Okay. So just be aware of that. Okay, so everything twice. What if you only want it to happen once? How do you do that? You can use a promise, right? This was uh, introduced in 1.6. So now you can say slide toggle and then dot promise and it converts that to a promise object and then you can use done. And then whatever will happen when all of the animations in that queue <coughs> are done. So let's try again. Slide toggle, hey, it happens once soon. Uh, okay. <coughs> All right, more promises. So, yeah, th this is awesome with Ajax, complete rewrite in 1.5, much better now than it was before. The API for it is still crazy, and there's all sorts of weird stuff in there, but it at least makes it more manageable to, to use, I think. So, um, you can, yeah, I'll just keep going, you can read. Uh, Ajax request can be cached in a simple, elegant way. I'll show you an example of that. So, repeating the old way when there's a better way, it's kind of crazy. You know, this is kind of like the old way. There's a better way to do this. Um, you can use, you can chain off of an Ajax request now. So, um, <laughs> use done, fail, and always, and then pass in your your uh, handlers there. Now, <clears throat> why is this such a better way? Well, you can also um, s store the the JQ uh, XHR object <coughs> in a variable, and then um, you know just uh, say request that done, request that fail, request that always. So that's kind of nice. <coughs> and you can also use multiple handlers. So you can do like all of these things will work. All nine of these things will uh, execute when the AJAX request is done. Uh, in the order in which they were uh, uh, set there. So that's kind of cool. Notice that you can do it with, um, with an array. So you could push functions onto an array uh, or, or pop them off or whatever as, as needed. And then you do your Ajax request and then and, uh, you're good. Okay, so finally, um, very simple. There, there are much better, more abstracted ways of doing this, but just to give you a, a simple, uh, idea of how you can cache Ajax requests. If you know that um, you definitely want the same response back when you send uh, a request with the same URL and the same data, right? That's not always the case if you're changing things on the server, but um, sometimes it is. Like, uh, like when I send a request to the JSONP uh, formatted uh, jQuery API, right? <coughs> I know I want the same results back given the same kind of search criteria. So this is not cached, but um, uh, all I'm doing is, you know, I'm sending this along, but watch. Here's what you can do. You can say, okay, I am going to create a, a little object uh, at the top, um, and then <coughs> uh, when somebody submits a form, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for um, this search, that search string, uh, as, as a property of the API object. Um, and if it doesn't exist, then I'm gonna say that's equal to this um, JQXHR object that gets returned uh, when I do this Ajax call. Um, and then I just do API search dot done and dot fail dot always whatever, right? And, and those things will happen. Now, if I've already done that search, those uh, callbacks are going to be executed immediately. I can skip the whole Ajax thing and just execute them immediately. So it's it's fairly simple. It's fairly um, you know there, there's not a whole lot of abstraction to it. You can get you can kind of go crazy with this stuff. Um, and if you're if you're into this sort of thing where like you know you you want to send something out, you don't know uh, when it's going to come back. It doesn't have to be with Ajax. It can be with all sorts of things. Um, but you want to execute functions when the uh, 
when it's all resolved, then you can look at uh, the deferred object uh, on the API site at api.jQuery.com. There's a lot of great stuff there. Um, it's really cool. And that's what Ajax uses uh, under the hood. So. Hey, hey Carl. <laughs> yeah, so we're done. All right. Um, it's my email address, my Twitter handle. And um, this is where the presentation is going to be. I made a couple of little changes that I need to uh, post up there, but otherwise, we're good. Um, probably don't have time for questions, do we? Or unless there are questions. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I have stickers. So afterwards, if anybody wants, like, jQuery stickers, jQuery UI, bumper stickers. <laughs> anyway, just come see me. All right, we good. Huh? Nope. Are you ready for questions? Yeah, oh yeah, are there any questions? I just asked and I didn't even look. <laughs> yeah. You had an example where you <laughs> had kind of the bad way of uh, having a bunch of HTML strung together in mm -hmm. a string. And then you had that other way where you created an object. Um, I'd like to learn more about that. Is there, is there a name for that technique? Uh, I don't know if there's a name for the technique, but um, talk to me afterwards. I, I can point you to a couple things. OK. okay. Yeah, Jason. All right. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to hold your slides? There. Got it. Yeah. So. Delegate at the document level the same as live, or they actually implement it? Say that again? Are live and delegate actually different? If, if you delegate at the document level, it's the same basically? Or is oh, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you delegate, if you say document.delegate, then it's going to be <coughs> effectively the same as live, except that um, when you use live, you're putting in um, a selector, right? Um, and so, so jQuery is going to loop through. The, the DOM, or it's going to it's going to query the DOM, looking for everything with that um, with that selector, and then it's just going to throw it away because it doesn't do anything. Yeah. It doesn't do anything with the result. It actually takes the string and and uh, uses that when it uh, when it does its own <laughs> delegation under the hood. So um, so yeah. So there's a performance penalty there, which is why, like I used to say, if you're using live, stick it in the head. Um, because then you're not querying much of a DOM, are you? Right? Um, and you don't you don't need to. And and you also th that way, like if you if you want to prevent like a, a click on a link, right? And you put it in the head, then you you can guarantee that that's going to be prevented. Um, you don't have you're not going to wait until the document's ready and somebody gets to click you know uh, at something at the top of the DOM uh, before the whole thing's ready. That sort of thing. All right, good.